up to now, all of the models we have considered um, treat the response with a normal distribution. Um, obviously, that's not always going to be a good model for all types of responses. And one way of um, getting different distributions into the response uh, is through the use of generalized linear models. So let's start with a very brief review of normal models. So here we have a random variable yi equal to mu i plus epsilon i. Uh, one assumption could be that we assume that the epsilon i's are independent and all distributed as normal mean zero variance sigma squared. Um, now, most of the models uh, this semester have had this exact form. Um, the one um, departure from uh, this form is when uh, we use random effects models, which allow for different types of assumptions about the errors. Um, namely, they could be correlated, um, and uh, they can have different variances. Um, now, another way of writing this normal model um, is the following. We can say yi are independent, normal, with mean mu i and variance sigma squared. And then we specify what the form of the means are. So in the case of linear models, we can write that as b0 plus sum j equals 1 to p b j x i j. So this particular form this encompasses all of the different forms we've discussed this semester. So it involves um, numeric covariates, uh, factors you can write this way, factor numeric interactions, factor factor interactions, so on and so forth. You can all write in this sort of general uh, form for the, um, the linear model. Um, like I said, this includes polynomials, factors, interactions, so on and so forth. Now, this is a very powerful modeling framework, um, but it doesn't cover everything. So in the next video, we're going to look at a data set of uh, field goals from the NFL. So in the NFL um, and football in general, they there's a way to score points by kicking the ball through um, a goal. And each time you kick, it either goes in or it doesn't. So the response there... Uh, is either no or yes, or binary. And binary responses in particular um, are not very well modeled with a normal distribution. You really can't get anything further uh, from a normal distribution than a binary response. So these normal models are great. Um, you've seen all of the flexibility of the models this semester, um, but it doesn't cover everything. So let's look at the form of the generalized linear model. The generalized linear model has three parts, uh, the family, the link, and the linear part. In the family part, we specify what is the distribution we assume uh, for the responses. Uh, in the link part, so in the distribution part, we're usually going to have a parameter that describes uh, what the specific, uh, for example, the mean of that distribution is. The link part links the mean, mu i, or whatever parameter you have here, to the linear part. So the link part, there's going to be some, uh, some parameter a i, and the link is uh, a function of a i, so that's mu i. And then a i, we model uh, with our normal, our regular old linear model. So. Uh, linear combination of the covariates. So just remember for generalized linear model, this is how you specify. You have to specify these three parts, the family, the link, and the linear part. The, your choices here will depend on whatever um, type of data you have and, and the covariates that you have. So um, the distribution, so this will be replaced by a specific probability distribution. We're going to look at binomial and Bernoulli in this lecture but it could be Poisson, which is a model for unbounded counts. It could be gamma distribution or whatever you like. The link will be replaced by a specific function. 
A very common link function is you do e to the ai to get mu i. Um, there's also the logistic link function, which we'll look at later in this lecture. And then the linear part will just depend on whatever covariates you want to include to help predict the response. Um, so this, this means which factors, which numeric covariates you're interested in for the specific uh, problem you're working on. All right, so the most basic generalized linear model probably is the uh, Bernoulli response. So when you have a Bernoulli response and you choose a specific link function called the logistic function, um, you get what people call logistic regression. So logistic regression is used when the response is binary. Um, for example, 0 or 1, success or failure. Um, so we'll write yi for the response. It's 1. In this field goal example, if the ith field goal attempt is a success and it's zero it's a, if it's a failure. What we want to do is model the probability of success of the field goal as a function of some covariates. In this example, we'll look at the distance um, of the field goal. So the distance, uh, how far away the kicker was from the goal uh, when he kicked the field goal. So let's go through the three parts of the generalized linear model. So the distribution we're going to choose as Bernoulli. Bernoulli is the natural distribution to choose uh, when your response is binary. Uh, we'll say that these are independent. Uh, Bernoulli PI. Uh, PI uh, in the Bernoulli distribution tells us the probability of a success for the ith attempt. Our link function uh, we're going to use this kind of weird function. This is called the logistic function. It's uh, e to the ai over 1 plus e to the ai. And the linear part is going to be very simple. Uh, b0 plus b1 xi, where xi is the distance of the ith field goal. All right, before we go on, let me just show you uh, what the logistic function looks like and why this is a, a natural choice for uh, Bernoulli responses for to link to a probability. So this is what the logistic function looks like. On the horizontal axis, we have a. And the vertical axis, we have e to the a over 1 plus e to the a. And you can see when a is very negative, you get um, probabilities that are close to 0. And then as a increases, the probability increases up until 1, but it doesn't go past 1. So this logistic function is a natural choice because it's a mapping from the whole line. So a can be any number, negative or positive, to the interval 0 or 1, which is where probabilities live. Probabilities have to be between 0 and 1. So this b0 plus b1xi, this could be any number. And the logistic function takes any number to this interval, which is natural for probabilities. Now let's see if we can interpret these parameters b0 and b1. As before, our strategy for finding interpretation for regression coefficients, in this case the coefficients in the linear part of the GLM, is to pick specific values for the covariate in a way that isolates the parameters, and then you can try to figure out what the interpretation is. So for B0, a natural choice for the covariate is to set x1 equal to 0, because that's going to isolate B0, if you set x1 to 0. So let's see what happens. If we pick x1 equal to 0, we get p1 is the logistic function, so e to the b0 plus b1 x1 over 1 plus e to the b0 plus b1 x1. Since x1 is 0 for this choice, you get e to the b0 over 1 plus e to the b0. Now we haven't yet isolated b0, uh, but we're almost there. If we look at what is 1 minus p1, so this is the probability, of, up, up top we have probability of success, down here we have probability of failure, uh, so 1 minus this quantity. Um, 1 you can always write as something over itself, so 
to make the equations work out, I'll, I'll write 1 plus e to the b0 over 1 plus e to the b0. If you subtract this off, um, this thing, the e to the b0s will cancel. And since they have the same denominator, you can just add them up. So this is 1 over 1 plus e to the b0. So this is 1 minus p1. The odds are defined as p1 over 1 minus p1. Now if you take p1, which is uh, e to the b0 over 1 plus e to the b0, and divide it by 1 minus p1, which is 1 over 1 plus e to the b0, you get e to the b0. So the 1 plus e to the b0 is cancel. And now we're very close to isolating b0. If we take the log of e to the b0, we get b0. So now we've isolated b0. b0 is the log of the odds for the first response, which had x1 equal to 0. So b0 is the log of the odds of success when the numeric covariate is 0. So that's what I have written down here. So that's the interpretation of B0. Um, one thing to note here is that uh, this definition of odds, uh, P1 over 1 minus P1, is uh, different from maybe your what you think of as odds. So if someone says the odds of this horse winning the race are 9 to 1, um, that means that uh, probability of the horse winning is 1 in 10. Um, this definition of odds flips that. That would say a horse that has a 10% chance of winning has odds 1 to 9 under this definition of odds. So just keep that in mind. Uh, this is a different definition of odds um, than is used in, in other situations. But this is what's uh, naturally, this is what is usually used um, when people talk about uh, log odds in the context of generalized linear models. All right, so that's B0. Let's see if we can come up uh, with an interpretation for B1. Now this one's slightly more challenging, so let's stick with me here. So we set X1 equal to 0, and we're going to reuse that choice. But now we're going to set X2 equal to 1. If we look at the odds for the second attempt divided by the odds for the first attempt, this is called an odds ratio. This is equal to E to the B0 plus B1 x2 divided by e to the b0 plus b1 x1. So the odds are always going to be e to the b0 plus b1 xi. If we take the odds ratio, you get this. If we plug in the specific values for x2 and x1, x2, x, x2 is equal to 1, so you get e to the b0 plus b1. x1 was 0, so you get e to the b0. And if you take the ratio of this, if you have a uh, sum of exponents, it's equal to e to the b0 plus, times e to the b1. Divide that by e to the b0, you're left with e to the b1. Now we're very close to isolating b1. We just have to take the log now. So b1 is equal to the log of this odds ratio. So it's the log odds ratio when xi is increased by 1. So that's the interpretation for B1. And in logistic regression, the interpretations for the regression coefficients are always going to have uh, interpretations like this. It's an it's a increase in the log odds ratio when it is the log odds ratio when the covariate is increased by 1. Okay, now the Bernoulli response distribution is just one example of a response distribution that you can pick for a generalized linear model. Uh, it can handle many different distributions, as I said before, binomial, Poisson, exponential, gamma, yada, yada, yada. But for each choice of the distribution, the basic structure of the model is the same. You have to specify the distribution, the link function, and the linear part. Um, and you can it's very flexible. You can get all kinds of different things, but sort of the core of the generalized linear model is the same. And each specific generalized linear model corresponds to a specific choice of a distribution, a specific choice of a link function, and a specific choice of uh, which covariates to include in the linear part. Uh, one final note is that you might be tempted to write something like this, 
yi is mu i plus epsilon i, where epsilon i has some distribution, non-normal distribution. Now this works for normal models. So if epsilon i is normal, then yi is going to be normal. But for other types of distributions, this doesn't work. So you might be tempted to write something like this, but don't do it for a generalized linear model. Always specify your generalized linear model with these three parts. So this is the example for our field goal data. Always specify it like this. There is one exception. There is something called a generalized linear mixed model. All this means it's a, it's a GLM uh, with random, effect, random effects in the linear part, but the specification is different. Um, if you want just a quick um, analysis of how it's different, if you're doing a generalized linear mix model, you're adding a random effect in the linear part, and not it's not that you're adding something to re the response. So don't ever, ever, ever write down a generalized linear model in this form. Um, it's not correct, um, and you'll confuse people. Okay, that's it for generalized linear models.